Good morning and thanks for joining us on Dialogue. Uh, this is a program that takes a look at topical national issues, of course, that have bearing uh, to the uh, lives of the ordinary citizens of this country. Uh, my name is Shafiu Suleiman. Uh, compliments of the season once again. Um, and of course, uh, today we'll be looking at uh, the year 2020. Uh, which is gradually wind, uh, winding up uh, precisely in the next couple of days, uh, we'll be bidding uh, farewell to the, 2020, uh, to the year 2020. Uh, it is a year, of course, that came with um, the good, the bad, and perhaps the ugly. Uh, it's a year that Nigerians will not forget in a hurry because of uh, several developments you know, that occurred within the year. Um, from the security perspectives, Nigeria has witnessed tremendous, if you like, unprecedented level of uh, security breaches, you know, uh, especially in the northern part of the country. Uh, looking at the economic uh, point of view, again, you would um, agree with me that Nigeria, again, would not forget this year because this is a year uh, that Nigeria slides into recession, um, a second recession, you know, uh, in five years, um, which uh, is currently um, being managed, you know, by the handlers of the economy and those at the helm of affairs of our country. Um, again, even from the governance perspective, you agree with me that there we've seen, uh, you know, a fallout of what many would term governance deficit, uh, which led to an unprecedented rise <coughs> of the youth uh, in protests. Uh, you know, protesting what they call uh, police brutality, which culminated into um, violence, you know, uh, in the end of it. Uh, and of course, uh, it, it's an event that uh, will perhaps must have shaken, you know, uh, the governance structure and of course uh, get those at the helm of affairs to also realize that uh, uh, the people have a very strong voice and of course uh, the need to make some adjustments where necessary. Again, um, also looking at uh, the nationhood, um, journey uh, to nationhood. Of course, Nigeria celebrated its 50th uh, independence anniversary, uh, the, the, the Golden Jubilee. Um, uh, so it was also a very um, historic year, so to speak. Um, celebration is still ongoing if I understand, because we're said to be celebrating uh, for six months or so, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but then we haven't seen much of the events after uh, the major events, uh, you know, that climax, uh, the 50th anniversary uh, celebration. Um, so these are very, um, you know, some, some few developments that have shaped, you know, the, the, the year 2020. Uh, so we'll be revisiting some of these events and of see where uh, there are lessons to learn and of course what lessons have been learned and uh, uh, what does the nation need to do you know uh, to move forward uh, in 2023 Nigerians are expecting a, a better year ahead and of course a year uh, that um, will see a reverse of uh, some of the negatives uh, negative trends that we've witnessed in 2020 uh, so we'll be looking at uh, this uh, development uh, with my guest. Uh, uh, supposedly, I'm supposed to have um, two guests in the studio. One perhaps might still be on his way uh, to the studio. But at the moment, I have uh, uh, Comrade uh, Salih Udantata Mahmoud. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst. Uh, is joining us this morning to look at some of these issues. Um, we're still expecting a security expert who will be joining us because just like I said earlier on, uh, many of the issues that shape 2020 are security related. So we'll be looking at uh, some of those uh, incidences of uh, security breaches and um, you know how best it can be handled. Thank you for joining us. Very good morning, our erudite, and uh, to Nigerians watching us uh, within and outside the country. And compliments of the season. Compliments of the season. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Um, well, to chronicle, if you like, if, if you are to chronicle, let's start with security, which is fundamental. Uh, the essence of any government, you know, is to provide security and welfare to the citizenry. Uh, so security is very paramount. Uh, security is tied to 
economic development is tied to you know social cohesion and all of that uh, so um, from January to date Nigeria has witnessed unprecedented number of security breaches uh, starting from January 3rd you know where 19 people were killed by a gunman in Tawari village in Kogi uh, on the 6th of January 30 people were killed 35 injured in a bomb explosion in Gamboru um, again in, on the 16th of January three aid workers were beheaded by Boko Haram uh, those uh, 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 aid workers that were held hostage uh, by, by the Boko Haram uh, 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 insurgents and again on the 9th of February there was this very deadly attack the Auno attack uh, where 30 people were killed you know uh, on the March on March 4 uh, four police officers and two civilian joint task force uh, were also killed in Damboa. On the 24th of March, 70 soldiers were said to have been ambushed and killed in Goneri village, um, Borno. Uh, on the 18th of April, bandits killed 47 in Katana. You know, uh, again, in the same month, uh, Boko Haram killed another 20 uh, while breaking their Ramadan fast, you know. On the 9th of June, 81 persons were said to have been killed also um, in Gubio. Another 20 in Katsana, you know, the list is endless. Um, if you look at also the rising cases of abductions for ransom, you know, uh, activities of bandits and so on, the uh, year uh, has really, uh, uh, you know, had a very bad share of, of security incidences. Uh, but let me get your perspective. What, to you, what has really shaped the 2020, 2020 and the outgoing 2020 uh, year? Well, uh, going by how you have mentioned most of the devastated security situation mm. in the country since January till date, I would say if there is any mm. issue mm. to be discussed in that Nigerian history is no more than uh, insecurity, mm. ranging from terrorism, mm. and banditry, kidnap-related activities, armed robbery, rape, mm. and other issues. Uh, while I would uh, say that uh, insecurity is not peculiar to Nigeria alone, mm. uh, I will not also uh, mm. rule out the fact mm. that connivance, conspiracy, and negligence mm. are also factors that made some of these uh, skeletal security issues mm. to mm. generate mm. into serious security issues. Because mm. uh, Nigeria as a country, since independence, we have given assistance to mm. even smaller African countries that were facing mm. uh, insecurity that ranged from political instability and also others. Mm. And when you talk about political instability, mm. it's even worse than mm. these ones we are facing today. So how come the same Nigeria mm. that lend uh, support mm. as well as collaborate with United Nations, African Union and ECOWAS forces to assist other countries was Stability, able to yeah. cope out mm. uh, insecurity ranging from kidnap related activities and banditry as well as terrorist activities. So that is to tell you that mm. negligence, like I said, conspiracy and compromise were involved mm. uh, i wouldn't say at the part of the security agencies and agents mm. uh, you see when we are talking about connivance and conspiracy mm. it can come from either mm. the civilian population mm. or even inhabitants of those areas mm. and uh, if i may say mm. that our situation was a uh, long term uh, lost Mm. an intelligence gathering okay. because for even countries like UK mm. Germany United uh, States of America China and also of other first world countries mm. that boost of manufacturing highly sophisticated uh, security gadgets weapons and also of others they also rely on intelligence gathering mm. and, and sharing uh, today America wouldn't have been what she is in aspect of being the police of the world without sophisticated intelligence gathering mm. network and all of others mm, but so i i, I yeah. believe in our own aspect mm. we s somehow mm. neglected that aspect of uh, security mm. uh, was it a neglect because looking at the institutional framework you find out that uh, most of these agencies and uh, departments that are responsible for you know intelligence gathering still exists the likes of the dss you know 
uh, even the police there are certain units that are you know saddled the responsibility of intelligence gathering and so on in the military there are the, there are the military I mean aspect of, of it you know those formations that are meant you know to help in gathering uh, intelligence and so on um, but you talked about sharing which is key now uh, there has been concerns regarding the issue of synergy among the security uh, forces uh, which is very vital for intelligence sharing and, and execution and so on. Um, where lies the problem? Is it that we are lacking enough institutions, I mean security institutions that would, you know, um, help in, in, in gathering this uh, intelligence or is it the lack of synergy that uh, was identified? Well, uh, first uh, among the mm. factors militating against uh, effective intelligence gathering and sharing is what you have preferred a solution and answer to mm -hmm. which is lost of synergy mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say there hasn't been that collaboration and cooperation because if you look at the battle mm -hmm. against insurgency in the northeastern part of the country mm -hmm. against armed banditry in the northwestern part of the country north central and other parts of the country you can see the intelligence officers of the police Department of State Services, mm -hmm. uh, those of the Navy, mm -hmm. those of the Air Force, including those of the paramilitary agencies like Immigration and Customs, collaborating and working towards one major goal. Mm -hmm. But most of the times, uh, we the, are in the military. There is uh, what is called the DMI. No, no, no. no. In the, the military, military you have what is called the DMI. Yeah. In the Navy, you have mm -hmm. DNI. Mm -hmm. That is the Director of Naval Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Then in Air Force, that is Director of Air Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Die. Yeah. That is DAI. That's right. Then there is a joint defense one that is called Defense Intelligence Agency mm -hmm. that also has uh, civilians mm -hmm. who also contribute to that uh, workforce and also for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think if I'm to give a uh, ratio, yeah. I'll give 40% of the collaborative as well as synergizing uh, effort and also for us. Mm -hmm. I think ego mm -hmm. has been the problem. Okay. Because in the situation where intelligence is gathered, mm -hmm. maybe by the land army, and they are feeling reluctant mm. to let the glory be to all to, to be shared yes you know. that is even the three arms they of they the take the credit alone. Yeah, absolutely like the navy air force like the land army or air force or navy wanting to take the glory by making the president and commander in chief to say oh no let the accolade mm. go to the air force alone or mm. army or navy or police so ego we've, seen, we've seen that manifested recent, recently with the with the rescue of the Gankara school Gankara board, where the student, military is claiming the police, police is claiming, claiming and virtually and everyone is claiming which ought not to credit. be because if you mm -hmm. if you take issue of the mm -hmm. bombing of the World Trade Center in United States of America for instance mm -hmm. even with the existence of the CIA FBI and others they still went ahead to mm -hmm. form online homeland security mm -hmm. so that is to say for us to succeed in Nigeria mm -hmm. the security agencies must collaborate, mm. share, and gather intelligence together because the constitution mm. recognizes them as security agencies of Nigeria mm. and not security agencies of Chad, Niger, mm. or any other country. Mm. So the issues are whether it is Air Force, Army, Navy, Police, they are working Customs, towards the same they are goal. Working towards the same goal and serving the constitution mm. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in accordance with the orders of the Commander-in-Chief. Mm. So they are working for one Commander-in-Chief and to an extension, Nigerian people. Right. With ta they are paid with taxpayers' money. Mm. So issue of ego shouldn't be yeah. okay uh, the continuous you know uh, activities of this armed group is also of concern uh, take for instance the insurgency that is um, has been ravaging the north uh, east for instance uh, you know it has gone beyond a decade now we're talking about almost two decades now of this Boko Haram insurgency and so on um, so um, despite efforts you know by, by government and and the security agencies in dealing with the crisis we've seen the resurgence of this criminality you know I, I i enumerated some of the attacks that were carried out by boko haram and and, and their allies and all of that a uh, number of people have been killed you know it's still happening uh, even recently uh, they will have uh, this this attack on the the highway the the uh, i think uh, meduguri uh, uh, the other uh, this highway where an attack was uh, took place just last week or so you know and a several number of people were killed and all of that some abducted uh, so it, it, it's still with us despite all the efforts where is the problem where uh, how are we getting to where we're getting despite all of this well there are three major factors mm. uh, to my own personal view mm. which I believe 
can also be the view of many Nigerians who are right thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, one, if we fail in our responsibilities as citizen police, mm -hmm. this is what happens. Because these bandits live amongst us, mm -hmm. these terrorists live among us, they go to the same market we go to, they drive on the same highway and roads we drive. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show that this mm -hmm. community policing initiative of mm -hmm. the federal government will be a solution if embraced because there is no way mm. i will stay in a committee for instance mm. where bandits are that i should not give privileged information to the security agencies mm. then the second aspect is aspect of the security agencies whether members of the armed forces police dss or whoever going against the rules of pulling the trigger mm. which says mm. don't pull me in anger Mm. and don't drop me in disgrace mm. from the look of offense you see that our security agencies and agents mm. they pull their trigger mm. with anger and drop in disgrace on bloody mm. innocent people mm. i call myself bloody because they call us bloody civilians mm -hmm. and we yeah. are the ones that become their police affairs mm. minister we are the ones that becomes their defense minister mm. and they still call us bloody civilians mm. so their happiness is always when they pull in anger Mm. and drop in disgrace against the civilian yeah. rather than going to pull against the bandits mm. as well as the terrorists i want to say with no apologies to any security agent mm. in a situation where you train mm. as either personnel or officers of the armed forces police dss or others and your mm. ego mm. is when you beat or batter a civilian mm. and not when you go to battlefield and get credit then the purpose of mm. you being an agent has been defeated so mm. I, I think in all ramifications yeah. supervision mm. also needed to be enhanced okay talking about collaboration you know and, and the role of the citizens in uh, aiding civil i mean uh, security agencies to defeat uh, these criminalities we're talking about uh, the issue of um trust you know trust among you know the, the people i mean the two parties talking about the public and the security agencies is very fundamental in most cases you find out that people are ready to share intelligence information but they are also afraid that uh, uh, in the end it might turn out against them because in the, so there has been a lot of allegations around you know security agencies or agents you know divulging information uh, exposing those who have helped them with intelligence and then um it becomes an issue now the criminals go back and attack even if it is a community the whole community is wiped you know in a village and all of that we've seen what happened with the zabarmari farmers they were said to have you know accosted a, a Boko haram member and then thereafter we've seen the reaction you know how the Boko haram uh, i mean a group came and then beheaded 43 of them or so so this competence building among the citizens and the security agencies is very critical how are you looking at this uh, because the two have to work together for us to be able to defeat uh, this uh, monsters well uh, the issue of trust uh, between the populace and the security agencies as well as agents i think it has been a kind of a cat mm -hmm. and mouse mm -hmm. uh, kind of relationship relationship in the sense that uh, you we observe mm. that even while you avail of the security agencies of for the intelligence arms of mm. the various security agents whether armed forces mm. police customs or others mm. for them to you know do a kind of attractive incentive that if for example mm. point Ebenezer or point Bola mm. or point uh, Eze or point we've seen what uh, we've seen what the whistleblower arrangement did to corruption no that is for the ESC yeah, yeah, at some point yeah, yeah I was just yeah, yeah. Yeah, using it as an example yes. a number of people came forth with information you know that helped you know recovering most of this 
uh, funds and all of that. Okay, I think it's about time we take a break. And in the studio, so we will be back in a moment. Uh, it's dialogue. very much uh, for staying with us on Look. and today we're looking at the outgoing 2020 and of course reviewing some of the major developments uh, that are shaping uh, the year or must have shaped the year and uh, we will with uh, more situation in the country because it has dominated you know uh, this course in the last 12 months you know uh, about a number of uh, security incidents ranging from Boko Haram activities uh, bandits and kidnappers, you know, and uh, that has uh, put the country on the edge. Uh, though there are several other issues we're going to look at, but then uh, the fact that uh, second guest is here and is a security uh, expert uh, talking about Rosanisi Baru, um, Bara, Bara, uh, you know, would uh, give him a benefit of saying one or two things regarding <laughs> the security situation. Uh, yeah. Thank you and uh, welcome uh, to Dialogue. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, uh, very quickly, from the security perspective, yeah. what would you say about the year 2020 Nigeria? Um, actually, this 2020 has been the tormenting year for us. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God we are still alive. Mm -hmm. but, uh, passed through the normal channel. Mm. Uh, among the most challenging issues we had in the country, mm. they are Boko Haram mm. from the northeast. We have uh, uh, Niger Delta militants mm. from the other side of the country. Mm. So, uh, mm. This um, Anglophone yeah. people, these they are they the separatists or separationists separatist from the Cameroon yeah. mm. because they have caused a lot of trouble mm. in the area of uh, Taraba State. Mm. The, mm. Their own was even mm. getting wider. Mm. Then we have an uh, issue of uh, Islamic movement of Nigeria, mm. that's uh, Shia, yeah. and we have banditry. Mm. Then we have uh, um, Yahoo, Yahoo. Uh, so it's yeah, another, is, yeah. uh, it's another uh, major insecurity yeah. facing this country, yeah. because anything that uh, that 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 makes your economy go down mm. is another problem. Yeah. So, so you're kind of mapping now. That is virtually it. every aspect of the uh, country, uh, every part of the country has one share of perhaps the yes, yes, security. Yes. Uh, yes. In, yes. in the country. Okay. Yeah. Now, looking at this rising cases of insecurity in our country, um, what would you say are the you know mitig I mean, 
uh, are the, the factors, you know, triggering this rise in criminality in our country. Is it about the governance deficit or is it about, you know, uh, the, the uh, inability to secure ourselves or to police ourselves? Is it, what exactly uh, is triggering this uh, rise in criminality? So actually, there's many factors that's responsible for the downgrading of insecurity. Mm. But I think uh, um, bribery and corruption is playing a very vital role. Okay. When you say corruption, it doesn't mean money exchanging hands. Mm. Um, not doing your job properly or doing your job when someone induces you mm. is part of it, especially in the area of uh, security agencies. Mm. Because when you look at the kidnapping, the Mm. you'll find out that uh, insincerity mm. contributed a lot mm. in this fight okay. and uh, the numbers of personnel we have in this country they are not enough mm. we need to triple or multiply by 10 mm. in order to secure the number of 220 uh, something million mm. then the intelligent gathering mm. It's yeah. another problem. Yeah, we just talked about that before. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. first of all, mm -hmm. in any situation you find yourself, there must be solution. But mm -hmm. knowing the problem is a step to the solution of that problem. Okay. Then, the, when you look at the security agencies, there's a lot of corruption. A lot of generals were being tried, mm -hmm. investigated by FCC, and they were, they were found wanting. Mm -hmm. So, the money is supposed to cater for the welfare of the, the troops. personnel troops mm -hmm. on the ground that will motivate them mm. to make them to be who they are or what they're suppo supposed to be. To be. Mm. The money is not there. Right. So this one will, will cripple the effort. Mm. Another part of it, um, if you look at the whole team, mm. um, there's a hatred to the government. Okay. Some people feel that they're not part of the government or they mm. want to make the government ungovernable and the political anger uh, hey, that is it <laughs> mm. and uh, actually mm -hmm. if they don't change at least we'll have a long way to go okay well, are they ready to change or the state has to also make them change because they have the state has the instrument of of, mm -hmm. of, of you know uh, apprehending whoever is found culpable or who is found wanting in sabotaging the government or creating uh, instability in the country. Yeah. Why is the government not applying some of those so instruments? This is another angle where the problem lies mm. because um, the political will mm. to dispense judgment mm. or justice mm. is wanting. Mm. Sometimes you'll go and arrest a criminal but this criminal will be free and you'll be free forever. Mm. So it seems like there is problem with our criminal laws justice or criminal system. justice. Right. Look at the example of uh, Azafara mm. banditry. Mm. The whole governor invited the former inspector general of police to help him to look mm. into the matter and find the solution. Mm. Being the mm. former IG, being him a member of uh, mm. Zamfara citizens, mm. announced he came up with mm. all what it takes to have the problem solved once and for all mm. but the governor could not step further mm. and it angered the former mm. uh, IG mm. MD Yusuf mm. he even said they shouldn't call him again mm. so, well, so so the mastering the political will to to I mean address the issues fundamentally or to uh, implement recommendations is another issue. It's another issue. Yeah, but then um, okay, we're, we're leaving this uh, matter because we have a number of issues to talk okay, about. Okay. Yeah, but then you raise a, a very key issue that is, uh, you know, the need um, to to uh, for for the for the for the political actors now, you know, to yeah. to to do the needful in terms of dispensing judgment. Uh, and the criminal justice system is very slow, just like you said. Uh, in some cases also compromises issues just like you said but uh, we've seen the likes of the cases of uh, uh, Wadume perhaps uh, that of Evans still lingering after months you know almost a year or more of, of their of their arrest and they've been prosecuted so the slow pace of the justice system perhaps must have also contributed I don't know how you're looking at that uh, Congress Aliu. Well uh, if you look at the uh, criminal justice system mm. I think uh, it's a major setback to dispensation of justice in this country mm. because like my learned colleague said mm. i have not seen 
mm. since I was born, mm. where high profile cases, mm. either of a robbery, either of kidnap or what have you, have mm. been executed to logical conclusion. Mm. And I can tell you if you go from uh, Supreme Court to Appellate Court to Federal High Courts to State High Courts up to uh, area courts level, mm. you see cases that ought to have been entered yeah. and uh, dispensed within mm. a period of time, being adjourned, being adjourned sometimes mm. due to the connivance of certain uh, people from the bar and certain people from the bench because you know these are two things involved mm. the judges are of the bench mm. while the lawyers are of the bar right. so it is when mm. you restructure the criminal justice system before you get an headway i was happy that the president said that he was going to institute a uh, special courts mm. for either kidnap related cases mm. uh, corruption related cases and others but we've not seen that to this effect because mm. neither the attorney general of the federation nor the chief justice of uh, the Federation have come forward to say we have instituted such. It is when mm. the system is restructured that you can have anyway. Because As no, mat no matter what arrest the mm. police make, the mm. DSS makes, the military makes, mm. they have to uh, in turn give it to the, the, the courts to, 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 to prosecute. Right. So I, I feel we mm. need to in totality restructure that angle of right. Okay, uh, living the security uh, situation, you know, uh, talking about economy. Uh, the nation's economy has also had a very um, negative, you know, trends uh, regarding as a result of perhaps uh, the the, the COVID-19 pandemic and of course our over reliance on oil uh, as a major foreign exchange. And uh, um, we've seen how that led us into recession. Uh, though the issue is a global issue, a number of economies have been affected. But ours was bad because of perhaps over reliance. Some experts would say. Um, how are you looking at you know the coming in or the the, the the pandemic and how i mean it affects nigeria as a nation uh, and its economy generally well if you are talking about affecting especially mm. the private sector mm. i can say it was in the geometrical form mm. because in any developing country mm. your lifespan mm. lies with the private sector Forget about the governmental circle where you have a free oil money and what have you. For you to get moving every day, you have to rely on the private sector. Even the oil companies that we are talking about, they are private sector driven because the major oil companies in the Niger Delta like uh, the Total Shell. Oil, Shell, Chevron and also others oh. are private sector driven. They are owned by private people. Mm -hmm. So I think in a way it affected our economic very well because we had lockdown where everything was a standstill government was not running companies were not manufacturing except those that were into health and medical related uh, areas and most yeah. of others so i think up till now we are still groping because it wasn't easy uh, above all i would say uh, i think uh, we also need to use this opportunity to get into non-oil sector i can vividly remember uh, bukola saraki uh, once said it is high time we go back to the drawing board where we are coming from before independence mm. what were our foreign exchange Mainstay, right. we had uh, cotton from mm. Kano and uh, the pyramid <coughs> as well as cocoa from the southwest then also coal from the southeast and also for us then i i'm also happy that uh, many states now are rising up to their responsibility by uh, getting into internally generated uh, revenue mm. so that uh, there is too much reliance of subvention and federal allocation will be reduced mm. to a minimal level. So I think in a way mm. it affected us, but above all, we need to think beyond just petroleum. Right. Okay. We, we're still with the COVID, you know, because it's, we are now facing the second wave of it, which is devastating, even more devastating than the first wave. Perhaps if you're looking at the dates at all and the fatalities that are being recorded and, and of course the number of cases that are being uh, registered on a uh, daily basis um the essence of i mean what whatever happens a country like nigeria should be able to learn a lesson you know the covid 19 has come with a lot of disruptions it has met us unprepared because our health sector was met you know at a very deteriorating alarming deteriorating stage um and and, and the covid came in and then expose us you know and all of that what lessons do you think we have learned you know from the COVID-19 pandemic and how are we applying remedies do you see um, the government or the authorities <coughs> concerned taking any necessary steps you know 
uh, to address the gaps that were ident identified? Um, yeah, actually, the COVID-19 is a news. It is a stranger to us. It came in the, in an unexpected time, and uh, problems that we here in Africa were facing. First of all, a lot of uh, people could not even believe it. They say it was just manufactured to depopulate the population. So while in the other way around, it's real because scientifically it's been proven. So a lot of uh, religion people traditional people, they could not even accept it, mm. one. Mm. Secondly, uh, it kills a lot. Every day in America, not less than 3,000 people mm. are dying. Mm. So, and uh, it comes to, mm. um, to, to our, our government now, attentions is to help people mm. identify the uh, problems mm. by scientific way of applying it. Mm. And uh, later on, people mm. could not uh, mm. understand what the government is trying to to okay. uh, actually mm. um, the, le, 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 lastly it was discovered from the military mm. site there was about 40 something people yeah, who were contacted yeah, and, yeah. and uh, now people are mm. just doing them mm. yeah a number of people are you know going into isolation yeah that event has exposed I mean or created a platform for the spread of the, yeah. the virus uh, but the government is trying to mitigate that but it's coming with a very uh, it's coming at a very difficult time comrade uh, Elias I mean uh, Salu um, it, it, the, the federal government has realized that it can no longer cope with you know funding the uh, measures towards curtailing the COVID-19 now it has left you know the fight or has pushed the fight to the states it is for obvious reasons some would say the economy is already uh, in red and the government is struggling to see how it can revive the economy I mean uh, which is already in recession and now the COVID has also returned so we are in a double jeopardy while the economy is going down and then the resurgence of the COVID-19 again is also putting more pressure uh, on the government how are you looking how do you think the government can navigate around this challenge well in the first place I think uh, it was very premature mm. for the federal government to say we are shifting it to the states if a father cannot feed the family, okay. is it the children you give back to that you want to feed? The mother is not right. Mm. So I think if the federal government hasn't relented mm. in area of tackling insecurity, mm. so how come on issues of health? Because there are certain things that moves in sequence. Mm. One, education, health, mm. as well as security. Mm. So if the federal government has now bowed down to area of tackling insecurity how come on this so i think the government or nigerians that responsibility to continue what happens to the world Health organization fund even though it remains uh, allocation what happens to private sector contribution or where are the donations made by the the, the, the great dangotes the, the hotel dollars yeah, yeah. and other industrialists where are these monies by bank uh, organizations oil companies and most of others you see the issues we need to do now mm. are not just lip service we must face reality world over when you talk about health care delivery mm. it lies on the federal government even the united states of america because i can quote uh, donald trump during the covid 19 uh, tough mm. days he said that the federal government has to take it by by, 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 by how it comes so how come our own government is mm. trying to run away so i feel now, what we should do now what we should do now mm. is by going back to agriculture mm. as well as promoting science and technology because for any country that cannot export you don't expect your gdp to grow you don't expect the world to take it serious today mm. we shout america we shout china uk russia other countries there are certain things they manufacture that many countries whether small or big patronize and import from these countries so nigeria need to get what is right if it is the agriculture we can divest into mm -hmm. by going back to these rural areas providing the infrastructure mm -hmm. the enabling environment for those crops to be exported cotton now for instance mm -hmm. we used to have commodity boards mm -hmm. in those days mm -hmm. we can revitalize the cotton board mm -hmm. the commodity board to take export of cotton to country look at Burkina Faso as small as they are today mm -hmm. they are getting their highest foreign exchange and are from cotton sales so let's revitalize our cotton board to do that then give prominence 
to technological development as well as science and technology in the country? Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, mm. he's talking about productivity. Yes. You know, no country will develop if it yeah. remains a consumer nation, yeah. uh, not a productive country. Uh, we have productive population, you know. Uh, the huge population that can drive an industrial revolution, for instance. But what we are lacking is uh, the, 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 the industrial base, uh, because most of the industries have, uh, industries have gone Collapse. under, and this is we've seen the implication of this also on the insecurity we are we are having today. How do you relate, or how do you, um, uh, I mean, look at this issue uh, vis-a-vis the rising criminality in our country? Um, government, you know taking the industrial uh, revival or, you know, production, I mean, productivity as, 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 as central in our economy. How do you think this would help also address the issue of insecurity? Well, actually, you know, um, the backbone of every economy is production mm. and uh, export. If you produce an area, we export mm. our foreign exchange will be stabilized. Mm -hmm. um, this government has tried a lot mm. in reviving the economy of this country. Um, especially look at the issue of uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. we, no country can survive without electricity. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of president is doing something about it. Mm -hmm. Look at the roads linking to the villages, the urban and the um, cities. Mm -hmm. So I think Mr. President is uh, on the right direction. Mm -hmm. So the issue of insecurity is something that will make everything collapse. Mm -hmm. Um, what we are still saying is uh, the government should double up mm. in its effort to tackle the security issue. Mm. If security issue has been addressed, everything will grow naturally. Okay. The farmers can be able to go to the farm and, yeah. and cultivate their harvest, unlike what is happening today. Mm. They will go and set up their farms, spend their money, and they cannot cultivate. Mm. And uh, even if they go, they will be asked to pay mm. and, uh, a ransom, a ransom. On, their, on, their, on their crops. Mm. So if security is okay, mm. and the electricity uh, is be okay, mm. then at the end of the day, we will have a natural growth economy. Okay. Because we are asking... So addressing the so insecurity many... issues would uh, pave way for rapid economic development especially yes. industrialization that you're talking about quite all right now comrade uh, Ilyasu, uh, nigeria as a nation also celebrated its 50th uh, anniversary uh, this year um is it 50th i can't remember now is it 50th anniversary fifty. yeah 50 50th uh, yeah, anniversary that, that was mm -hmm. celebrated mm -hmm. oh, okay um it, it came at a time you know because we're talking about 2020 coincidentally 2020 was pegged you know uh, as projected rather uh, to be a, 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 na a year that Nigeria would be among 20 most developed economies. That was the projection. But that appeared to have eluded the country. We are nowhere near these 20 most developed economies. And here we are battling with recession even. Um, how would you, looking at our nationhood, the journey, you know, uh, since independence, um, what would you say regarding the celebration of the 50th anniversary and lessons we learned? Are we learning any lesson? What are we doing, you know, to change the direction towards where we're going? Well, uh, like uh, you said, uh, we had projected 2020. Abacha, with blessed memory, may mm. so rest in peace, projected 2010. Yes. Because I can vividly recall mm -hmm. vision. 2010, 2010, yeah. when and it was later, later, when we failed so, to achieve that, we're talking about so 2020. 2020. Mm. So I think since independence, I can say mm. one thing kept us going, mm. national unity okay. and national progression. Because if you know, mm. we moved from country to a nation. Mm. And it wasn't easy mm. for one person from another part to accept mm. that this person from another part is is or a brother mm. or sister mm. the issues are uh, i can say the journey mm. has been half smooth half rough okay when we take the issue of insecurity mm. we say that is half rough when we take the issue of other progressions mm. we've had today in the committee of nations mm. if nigeria is not mentioned whether at the united nations level african union level ECOWAS level or other no aligned movement and what have you you haven't gotten it uh, right mm. and uh, again no matter what we say like i said earlier mm. insecurity mm. 
mm. is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. Yes. Even America, UK, China, and other countries. Afghanistan today is a failed country. Are we a failed nation? No. Mm. Syria so today is a failed country. No, no, no. no. To that, be is the the assertion. that is the assertion mm. and insinuation of some disgruntled and undesirable elements. Mm. You see, I am I, I, very grateful that as young men here, mm. the journey has been that way. Mm. You see, no one can tell you how your bedroom looks like except you. It is you that know the color of the pant of your wife, not not your neighbor. Mm. So the issue I'm trying to say with, 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 with due respect, mm. our internal affairs mm. should be our internal affairs. There are people who have been wishing us bad mm. that Nigeria is going to disintegrate. I want to say it without any apology. They are prophets of doom mm. and that is why I call them undesirable. Mm. You see, we have been proponents of national unity. Mm. We have been proponents of national development. We need to come together. Mm. Since independence, we have been having it right in some aspect and having it wrong in some aspect. Mm. Above all, we also need... But we are still questioning our existence, talking about the need to restructure so that we can meet up with our contemporary challenges. You know, Nigeria is evolving. We are talking about more than 200 million people with more than 500 ethnic nationalities and so on. So, the country is growing, but we still remain you know, where we are in terms of you know the structural framework of our development and structural framework of our governance and all of that do you think you know those who have been pushing for this restructuring and uh, you know it's coming at the right time the country really need to sit down and look at all of this well i'm not a proponent of restructuring because mm -hmm. even some of the mm -hmm. people proposing the restructuring now like our elder statesman former president Oluja Obasanjo, mm -hmm. at one time said is opposed to restructuring how come now baba is saying he wants restructuring you see we have a lot of confused elites with due respect to all of them because they've paid their dues but i want to say most of them are our problems and that is why one of the books i wrote in uh, 1997 mm. i said we have a useless elite who can even sell their mothers were so 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 no i'm using the word some okay. there are mm. some useless elites mm. they know the sweetness of the power mm. they know the sweetness of first class they know sweetness of everything mm. the issues are right now restructuring is not our problem mm. if we must do anything now it is to see how we end and cope insecurity in the country mm. and it must be collective whether Igbo elite, whether Hausa elite, whether uh, mm. uh, Yoruba elite, whether Bokoboro elite, whether Fulani elite, what, whatever, what have you. Now we need to be united to fight insecurity because you cannot tell me that in the southwest there is no problem of insecurity. Mm. You can't tell me that in the southeast there is no problem of insecurity. The same thing northwest, mm. north central, north east, and other countries. Mm. So our problem now in Nigeria is not restructuring. Mm. This is an elitist subject matter because like i mentioned to you earlier mm. they have been our problem since independence so it is now left for nigerians mm. especially the middle and lower class mm. to also sit down think about what is right when and how and not what is wrong when and where it is wrong okay now talking about collective efforts you know to curb insecurity which we agreed here that is our fundamental problems uh, affecting our economy and uh, also uh, social stability and, and national cohesion uh, now uh, looking at solutions to some of these problems, Nigeria is moving into 2023 and, uh, you know, we are moving in with a lot of deficits, economic deficits, security deficits and so on. How do you think uh, we can get out of this, you know, perhaps going into 2023? So actually, uh, 2021, 2021. Sorry. actually what we need, we need to be sincere with ourselves mm -hmm. and we need to be honest with what we are doing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes whatever you plan to uh, ask people to do without sincerity and honesty, we can achieve it. Um, issue of uh, dispensing judgment is very, very important. Um, security gathering is very, very important. So these are the two key areas where we can rely on having our okay. self -okay. Okay, uh, addressing uh, some of the gaps in our security architecture that will help us resolve that. Uh, then, but then looking at the economy, uh, Comrade uh, Elias, um, uh, salute, <laughs> salute and Tata Mahmoud. Um, we have our authorities telling us that uh, we will soon get out of recession. You know, they're working towards uh, making sure that it didn't last long. But we are having a prevailing challenge that is talking about the COVID pandemic. How do you think we can get out of this quagmire in a very near future, perhaps going to 2021? 
Well, it is when we separate the Apex Bank from the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Because if you look at from what has been trending, mm. there has been love lost between the members of the Economic Summit Group and the Apex Bank leadership, that is the Central Bank of Nigeria, mm. We are even the CBN governor having to describe some of them as opportunists mm. who climb through that platform in order to get GC appointment and contracts, which is not right. Mm. There is no way you can constitute an economic group that is of no impact to even the person at the grassroots. You must bring experts who will come there to only provide solution to some of our economic uh, downloads and also for that and not to wanting to reach to get the IS contract at NNPC or this and that. And again, the Apex Bank as well as the finance ministry itself, you need mm. to bring competent hands that can initiate uh, economic blueprints that can move Nigeria forward. And that is why I gave uh, reasons of why you need to properly fund the science and technology sector. If you look at our science and technology sector under this COVID-19, they were able to produce certain things like hand sanitizers, mm -hmm. ventilators that were eaten to scarce in quarantine centers and others. What led to this? It was the scarcity because they realized if we continue to import, certain people will die because of the barriers at that time. Mm -hmm. So what we need we'll to, to look do... Inward, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the Economic Summit Group should give prominence to science and technology. Even if it warrants bring people from, bringing people from diaspora mm. to come and form economic group, it mustn't be that you are industrialist or you are so, so so company in Kaduna or you are in Lagos or Shobo, you mm. must be a member. No. Especially if when they are talking start, digital yes, economy. What happens to people like Jelani uh, Ibrahim that are uh, designing uh, what have you for GM Motors and also others? Mm. So these are the kind of uh, competent heads we need in both the Ministry of Finance as well as the NE. SG as well as the central bank. Then again, political mm. uh, and picking for people that we form a team at the Apex Bank should also be discouraged because mm. if you look at a uh, crop of uh, developments now in central bank, you can see most of the people that are deputy governors, most of the people that are directors and host of others mm. are people that if you ask them questions, what practical financial solution have you provided in your private capacity before being appointed? No. So we need to decide. So that. getting the right appointments and then getting the right absolutely policy, policy quantitative direction. people than quantitative people right. than quantity. Okay, from the uh, security point of view, the government is rejigging, rejigging not necessarily the architecture, but it's looking at the need, you know, to increase the capacity of the uh, pass uh, its security forces to fight and tackle insecurity. Just recently, the president launched, you know, some uh, aircraft, you know, a fighter jets and all of that. Uh, perhaps. Uh, when there is the political will again uh, to address this issue of banditry and kidnappings, uh, some of this military hardware would, would help. How are you looking at the, what do you think rather the government should do, you know, going into 2021 in dealing with this insecurity or bringing it, you know, drastically to the barest minimum? Recruitment of competent hands. Mm -hmm. I will give you a referral example. Mm -hmm. You go to crops of recruits that are taken to depot, Nigeria and his area, mm. police colleges, police academy or defense academy. They come most at times to be successful through notes from godfathers, either senators, retired generals, retired AIGs, retired ambassador, retired this and this, which ought not to be. The moment you get recruitment process wrong, then the essence of getting personnel and officers that will go and lay their lives for the country has been defeated. And that is what you have now. The last uh, NDA selection board, mm. there were a lot of issues where mm. somebody that was the overall best, mm. at the end of the day, what happened? Somebody that didn't even make any order mm. came to be victorious and successful, which ought not to be. Mm. So I think like my right. brother said also, mm. you need to also motivate right. moral booster, welfare. Mm. The moment there is no hazard, mm. insurance, a proper package mm. to equate it. Mm. We are not saying that those of the commission officers should be enough, but let welfare also be enhanced. Okay, thank you very much, Comrade uh, Salud and Tata Mahmoud, a public affairs analyst, uh, for helping us uh, in analyzing some of the major developments that shaped the 2023. And of course, Andrew Sanusi a security expert, yeah. thank you very much uh, for joining us on the thank platform. Thank you very much. So on their behalf and the technical crew, uh, it's about time we draw the curtain of this discussion uh, and of course, uh, the program has been dialogue, and uh, uh, keep a date with us tomorrow, where we will be back with another set of uh, personalities and, and uh, compelling topics. Before then, my name is Shafiu Suleiman. Have a wonderful day ahead.